G'day guys, what's cracking? It's Ralph here, and if you're wondering where on earth I am, I'm not in a cave. Nope, I'm on the top of a mountain. Yep, I'm on the top of Mount Tambourine, where the temperature has plummeted as we've driven up the mountain. It's about eight o'clock at night, and it's basically the last possible time of the year to shoot the Milky Way, and I'm gonna do it with this. That's right, the GoPro Hero 10. We're gonna shoot the Milky Way. I know you're thinking, what? You can't do that. I can, I'm gonna, it's gonna be epic. And I want you to stick around and watch. <laughs> Just not working. Gosh. Oh, it's so good. Now obviously the massive challenge of shooting the Milky Way with the tiny, tiny camera like this is the sensor size. The sensor size is what is known as much smaller than full frame. When you shoot the Milky Way, you want the sensor to be as big as possible so it can absorb as much light as possible so that you can lower your ISO and reduce the noise in the photograph. That's basically how it is. And you stick a big lens on the front that has a very low aperture of 2.8 or 1.8 or whatever that might look like to explore, expand the amount the light gets sucked in. The challenge we have with this is it's a fixed 2.8 aperture, which is a full frame equivalent of about a seven or an eight aperture, right? So you're already up against it. You have limitations on the ISO of where you can push the ISO to, which we'll get into shortly when we come to talking about the settings. And of course you have the sensor size. And so whatever comes out of this camera is not going to be like, like blow up to the size of your house and stick it in a gallery with a glass background and go, it's, we're not aiming for that. But what we want to see if we can get a clear, clear quality Milky Way shot out of this tiny, tiny camera. The GoPro 10 is not designed for astrophotography. So let's not kid ourselves. What we're trying to do is outside the norm and outside of the regulations of what you might want to use this camera for. But wouldn't it be cool if you could take Milky Way shots on your GoPro 10? So you're out camping or whatever, and you're like, I've just got the camera. I actually, instead of just whacking on my chest or my helmet to do some extreme sports, we can actually um, take it out, stick it on a tripod, and see what we can get. And that's what I want to talk you through right now. First of all, when you fire up the GoPro, you've got to go to photo mode. Once you're on photo mode, and this camera takes 23 megapixel photos, so it's no slouch, you've got some photo options. The options you have, you can do live bursts, which is it takes before and after whenever you press the button. You can take bursts, so it means you press the button and take 10 photos in a row, or you can do night photo, and that's what we're doing. So once you go on night photo, you then click the little pen in the settings, and we have some settings that come up. Uh, lens, we can't change shutter. Now let me talk about shutter. If we're doing Milky Way or star shots, what happens is there's a formula you can apply to your camera, which basically results in you want to take a Milky Way shot at 20 second shutter. So you open your shutter for 20 seconds and you don't want to do more than that because then the stars start to move. So we're just going to put it on 20 second shutter. The zoom doesn't count, the schedule captures off. We want raw output, so we need to edit this later on, which we'll do, so we need raw output. And then when we go to the Pro Tune settings, we're putting on 5,500K, which is Kelvin, it's basically daylight equivalent, so we can make it warmer or cooler in post, but we're not going to do that live. And then we have the setting that makes a difference with this camera. We have the ISO minimum. And the ISO minimum is what the camera operates on. And what a lot of people do is they set their ISO minimum at 100 and their ISO max at 800, and it means they can only shoot at 800. But when you put the shutter speed at 20 on this, it gives you the option to put your ISO minimum on 3200. I know. And if you have your shutter at 30 seconds, it gives you the opportunity to put your ISO at 1600. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set it up and I'm gonna shoot the Milky Way and I'm gonna put a variety of um, settings and then we're gonna go back to the studio and I'm gonna show you what each of them look like so we can work out what the best settings are to shoot the Milky Way so that when the season comes around next time or if you're in other parts of the world, you can get out and enjoy it quick smart because it's a beautiful thing to behold. And tonight, tonight's gonna be a great night. So you came back with me, that shot that I just put up was a Milky Way night lapse done on the GoPro Hero 10. And I'll put the settings here in case you want to give it a burl. And as you would have seen from that, and you'll see from these images, one of the challenges is light pollution. 
we we're in the middle of Tambourine and we're looking out into the darkness, but right in the back in the center of the shot, as you'll see in just a second, was Bow Desert. Bow Desert's a small town situated right at the back of the hinterland, but it gives off a lot of light and that's what creates ambient light. There was also a bit of haze on the horizon, which meant we couldn't um, wait till it got lower and had to shoot it where you'll see these three images. So the three images I have for you are uh, already uploaded onto Lightroom. They are shot at 3200 ISO, 1600 ISO and 800 ISO. So these are straight out of camera. If we go to 3200, that's come straight out of camera. It looks pretty good, right? You're like, whew, that's, um, that's not bad because you can clearly see the Milky Way through here. And then we go down to 800, it's obviously muffled. And halfway between, it's 1600. Uh, that's looking pretty recognizable, but not super sharp. So what I want to do now is I'm going to add an edit to this and Milky Way edits. Some people might call it presets. And if you're interested in some presets, I've got some presets downstairs, but we are gonna add the preset to this and you will automatically see the Milky Way pop out. Actually, that's what we want. We want a bit of pop. Now, now that it's popped out, let me um, zoom in and I'll zoom in right on the brightest part of the core and you'll see how noisy that is. See, all this, this is all noise. Now the Stars are quite sharp. Maybe I could shoot at 15 seconds rather than 20. But again, if we shoot at 15 seconds, we lose some of what we gain in the, the time exposure. So the longer the shutters open, the more light we bring in. But that's I'm pretty happy with that, especially when you look at it like, like this. But now if we go over to the 1600, it looks darker. And if we zoom in, there's still a little bit of noise, but it's very dark. So what we want to do is apply the same setting, the same preset that we did to the first image to the next two. So we're going to put that onto the 1600 and then we're going to put it onto the 800 and again you go, oh yep yeah, it's there but it's not very bright so what we need to do for an accurate comparison is exposure match them and the way you do this you select your first image that has the correct exposure that you want all the other ones to apply to then you go shift and select them all then you go up to settings and you go all the way down to match total exposures. You hit that and what it does is it calculates the exposure used on this photograph and then applies it so that the same exposure level is on the next photograph and is on, see that's the 800 and this is the 1600. So now we can actually bore down on the brightest part of the Milky Way and we can check them across. Uh, let's go back to 3200 and we zoom right in and that's how noisy it is at a fully edited image. Obviously, the more you process it, the more wear and tear it has on the photograph. Because it's raw, we can process it more. That's why we shoot in raw. Now, we're going to jump across to the 1600. And we're going to zoom in on the same spot. All right, that's that. Now, let's go to the 800. And let me put them up next to each other, the three of them. A slice of the pie so you can see which one you think is the best quality. The trade-off with this is if you shoot with a high ISO, it becomes noisy, but if you increase the exposure, it becomes noisier too. And so what we're looking for is the best balance between maximum ISO levels to use and maximum exposure to post-product it at. So the big question is which image do you like the best? If you look at it from a, a larger perspective, because you have the light of the night sky as well, you don't just have the, the core of the Milky Way, um, and if you have to choose between 3200, between 1600, and between 800, which would you choose? I just want to put a bit of luminance into this photo. We're going to put it up to 22. And as you can see, it gradually smooths out the noise up here. That's where you get to see it. And you can see already, like, it just makes such a difference just there and there. I mean, this is good for Instagram. You want to stick it up on Instagram. We could run it through a de-warp setting, which you do as you go up to lens corrections. And basically you go manual and you go distortion and you increase the distortion up to there and it flattens things out. You can do that a couple of times. But I think if you're just looking at the quality of the Milky Way from the naked eye, standing back, I actually think the 3200 ISO has it by a smidge, providing you're not pixel peaking. If you're pixel peaking on this, you should get a better camera to shoot Astro. I hope you've really enjoyed this. This is actually the prequel to another video I'm about to do where we're going to see 
if the GoPro Hero 10 can actually shoot star trails, like sky full of stars. What do you reckon? Think it's up to it? And the question is, how do you do it? So we're gonna apply the learning from this video into that video and see if it comes up trumps. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. It is a colorful night tonight with a lot of characters out and about. Um, maybe this, maybe I'll get stabbed and then this will be like my last will and testament. Yeah, I hope not, it's not gonna be that fun. Okay, then this camera takes 23 point something or other. And this camera,